The parental rights movement began to take form two years ago in Fairfax and Loudoun counties, Virginia, as protests against some of the social policies that were being enacted in the public school systems. With the success of the election of Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who seized on the parental rights issue in his campaign, it was a question of when, not if, the parental rights issue would begin to play a major role in Maryland and Montgomery County politics. Earlier this year, a lawsuit was filed over the Montgomery County Public School System's refusal to allow parents to opt their children out of classes with LGBTQ lessons, which lost in the Federal District Court of Maryland and is now being appealed in the Fourth Circuit Federal Court of Appeals. But this past week, the Montgomery County Chapter of Moms for Liberty, an American conservative political organization that advocates against school curricula that mentions LGBT rights and discriminations, protested gender ideology across from Gaithersburg High School. Nancy, Adam Pagnuco wrote in his political blog that the parental rights movement is growing in the country and could be a major issue in next year's school board elections. Do you agree with that assessment? Number one, Montgomery County is not uh, is not Virginia. Uh, this is a far more liberal community. You know, I looked up this group online. Montgomery it did not identify a Montgomery County chapter. Now perhaps that's new, uh, but it was not on their online website. Do you know what they want, want removed from our schools? They want the inauguration poem by Amanda Gorman removed of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck, um, The Color Purple, Alice Walker, To Kill a Mockingbird, Fahrenheit 451, and my favorite, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Now, I mean, who are these people, number one? Who are they to tell me what my children should be exposed to? And frankly, I don't think these are on anybody's particular reading list. These are just uh, options that are available to our students in the school. If you don't want to be in the school system, you don't have to be in the school system. But don't tell me what my children can be exposed to. I find this, these groups offensive. Parental rights, we all have it. We, we exercise those rights at home. But you know, That's Nancy, I mean, your argument about not wanting your children to be, or not being wanted to told what your children can read is the same argument that, that these groups are making. And this, these, not, these, these, group, the these groups are growing and growing in number and in strength. And, and we are seeing, you know, three years ago, this, wouldn't have, this wasn't a topic on, on, any, on anybody's mind that this would happen and occur in Montgomery County. It has been growing. There was a small push during the last school board elections. A couple of candidates tried to dance around the issue. We had, we had um, the candidate, Dan Cox, make it a part of his his campaign for governor. So, so this is not an issue sh that should be dismissed. One of the other uh, key points that people tend to forget is the Board of Education is not a county agency. It's a product of the state. Uh, the rules are set by the State Board of Education, not locally. So the opt-out issue was a state issue uh, and highly regulated by the state of Maryland not by Montgomery County. People think that, uh, do not understand the division of responsibility between the various jurisdictions. And that clouds the advocacy and it, it, it confuses the issue for many, many people. Well, just as we saw in Virginia, we saw that, that, that most of those issues, you're correct, may be a state issue. It ended up electing a Republican in, in, in the state house. But now I wanna to go to Stacy on this because you know Nancy makes a great point. You know, the, the, Maryland is a liberal state. Montgomery County is a liberal state. And to, to show that, earlier this year, the Maryland General Assembly passed the Trans Health, Trans Health Equity Act, which expanded access to gender affirming care throughout the state. So this indicates that a majority of Marylanders are in support of such care. How important will this issue of parental rights play in the next election? Well, to the first point, you have um, you, you cannot assume that anything that has been passed by the supermajority legislature has supermajority support across the state of Maryland. 
this is a body politic that has um, great agency in this state because they have a machine, they have an agenda, and they have a script, and they have the power to pass whatever they want. This is why you have groups like Moms for Liberty fomenting in this area, because they're saying, no, this is not what we want for our children. And so you see this in Montgomery County going on right now, that parents have natural rights where their kids are concerned, and they're just out there trying to protect them. So the thing, the issue that I see principally is that there's not enough dialogue or transparency with the parents. You're going to talk about a sports great in Maryland, Brooks Robinson coming up. We have another sports great here, and that's John Harbaugh, who is the coach of the Baltimore Ravens. He's a servant leader. And that man loves to ask his players, what do you think? And this is what's missing from the equation in all of this right now. Parents are not being asked what they think. They're, being, they're right now coming forward and demanding that they be heard. Well, I, Nancy, I don't think it's a surprise that parents want involvement in, in, the, in their, the decisions that are being made at the schools. Uh, if I could comment, I mean, Casey, your kids went to uh, Catholic schools, right? No, they did. Well, that's fine. You made a choice. My kids right. uh, went to a variety of different schools. I don't know about uh, Stacy if you have children or where they've attended school, but I I do think uh, parents, of course, they have a right to determine how what they want their children exposed to. But when you have your child in the public school system, you're stuck with the public school system, which has incredible benefits and and other challenges. And that's one of the trade-offs. That's what you pay for in the private school. More engagement, more ownership of the conversation. But you so, just hit on a key point. Well, you just hit on a key point, and that's being stuck. That the parents feel like they're stuck. Like, yeah, no, it's no, not it's being stuck. But, you know, we're not even talking about things that children are actually doing. This is like a conceptual thing. It's not like anyone's forcing them to read any of the books I just listed that I think most of us thinking people would say, these are basically Pulitzer Prize type material that people should be exposed to. Like it or not. I don't like what you think. Oh, well, well, let me hear about it at least. And that's Grace, the I'll give you, we gotta, we, we're, gonna, we're coming up don't to a break. Up, don't shut out a portion of the conversation. I'm gonna listen to people I disagree with. And that's the point of this conversation, right? Yeah, Stacey, but I'll give you the last last word. We have about 30 seconds. Yeah. It, you know what the old saying, democracy dies in darkness? No, it doesn't. It dies in silence. And parents have a right to speak up and they have a right to be heard and they have a right to be respected. And so, Nancy, you can say you're open minded and that you will listen to them. But if you're the one in authority and you're the final decision maker, then you can take a so what, who cares attitude. Too bad. Well, see, this is this is a, a topic that I love because my old chestnut, which I push, and Nancy, you're right. I sent my kids to to parochial schools and and to Catholic high schools, and I paid for that. But I don't. I think I think that we should have school choice in Maryland and and give out vouchers for everyone so they can take their tax dollars and and use them to educate their children the way they want. That's my that that's my topic. I I beat it to death every week and someday we're going to see a movement in that regard.